Well, family caregiving expert Stephanie Erickson joining us back on the show to talk about the psychological stages of aging and the process of aging. Welcome back to the show. It's Thanks, great Derek. to have you here. We're just having a great conversation. You mentioned right off the top is, you know, we have to look at it as, as sort of having milestones. Right. But So what do, what do you mean by that exactly? So there is a great psychologist, Eric Erickson, no relation to me, unfortunately, right. <laughs> from the 1950s, and he developed these milestones okay. that we achieve throughout our life. So a good example would be an infancy, it's trust versus mistrust. So we want to achieve trust with our caregivers, and if we don't, we feel mistrust. And that process takes us throughout our life. So as, avid, as an infant, if you mistrust the world, imagine how that impacts you throughout the rest of your life. Right, of course. And yeah, and I think we forget that, you know, how seniors are thinking. So mm -hmm. you work with so many seniors, Stephanie. So what do they think about themselves? What do they think about their value as they as they get older? Most feel like they're just pushed off on, on the side. Yeah. They're not important. They're a burden. Um, they are, they're not giving back to the community anymore, to their family. My grandma tells me all the time she feels like she's just an af afterthought that no one's really paying attention to her. It makes me feel so yeah, sad. It yeah, it is. It's, it's heartbreaking yeah. to think about that. And you know how much that they've contributed, right? Mm -hmm. Not only to their family, yeah. but, but to you know, society in general. And to think that they feel almost like outcasts now, that, I know. that breaks my heart. I know, me too. And so I think what happens as we age, because milestones occur throughout our entire life. So in this age group, I'm Sorry, we're already in. The <laughs> I've already hit one of these <laughs> well, age no, groups. Is that what you're telling well, me? Well, we have milestones throughout our entire right. life. So right now, 40 to 65, I've just revealed our age bracket. Uh -huh. uh, it's generativity versus stagnation. So, so what does that mean? We're trying to make our mark on the world, give back, leave a legacy. So for me, it's about spreading health and wellness education. That's what I'm doing right now so that I can leave something behind. And for right. you, it's the same kind of a thing. So if you're missing that, though, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's where there's cause for concern concern in somebody's psychological process, right? That's right, because 65 plus, now you're, it's ego, integrity versus despair, which means life review. I'm looking back on my accomplishments. Did I achieve those things? And if not, as I'm ending or, or moving towards the end of my life, how is this impacting how I'm looking at aging, how I'm connecting with right. people, and how I feel about eventually, you know, saying goodbye and letting go? What are your clients saying about those things? When you speak to your clients, are they looking back and do they feel good about where, where they're at or where they were? I, I, it's a mixed bag, right? Yeah. Um, but I think what I find that's the most important for people, it's not career at all. Yeah. Rarely do people talk about, oh, I built this great business and I made all this money. It's always about relationships. Mm -hmm. This is what I regret. This is what I'm remorseful about. Now I don't have a relationship with my son, my daughter, uh, or my partner. We didn't have a great marriage. And that's what I think sit, sits with people at the end of their life. Uh, let's stick with that 65 plus. So you start getting into, the, you know, aging into your 70s and perhaps in, into your 80s. And you mentioned relationships. And things un unfortunately happen. And grief and loss begin mm -hmm. to happen at that age group. And you lose more than just friends and family. There are a lot of other things that you lose during that period, right? You're losing your mobility. You're losing your health. For some people, they're losing their mind. For some people, they're moving, they're so they're losing their community, yeah. their family home, all those memories that are locked up inside that home. I mean, loss, loss of, affects us our entire life. But at that stage, you know, 65 plus, 70, 80, 85, loss is very significant. Stephanie, I think the key here is having sympathy, right? Yes. And understanding the loss of all of those things. How do we show proper sympathy and what kind of sympathy are, are they looking for, right? Because I don't think people want to be pitied. They just want to be understood and, and have you sympathize with them. Yeah, I think the best word is compassion. Yeah. And also to give people time because we tend to brush off seniors like, oh, come on, mom, it's not that bad. Oh, come on, your life was great. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. And we're, you know, we're busy in, in our life, so we're kind of brushing people off. We need to sit still and listen to the stories that people are sharing with us. Let them process their life, come to terms with what it was and what it is, and it's really going to help people then feel comfortable and less isolated. How do I find, you know, that unfortunately families are, are all over the place yeah. now, right? People get jobs, you know, across the country, maybe in another country. How do I make sure that they still feel that they have a support group around them when not, every, everyone's not around them anymore? 
Well, there's the phone. Yeah. <laughs> there's, you know, Skype calls, there's FaceTime. So you can still do a lot of face-to-face. -face. Um, you can be sending letters, you know, but I mean, a phone call means a lot. I know I yeah. call my grandma and she always says, thank you for calling. It just makes her feel good. I'm, I'm thinking of you, grandma, and she's in California, but I'm right. thinking of her and I'm reaching out to her. And resources are so important. I know there are a lot out there and it's important that people realize that there are, there are a lot of things they can reach out to and, and find sort of, you know, things they, they can do socially because I think that's, yeah. a, that's a big issue, right? Yeah, well, you want to connect to any community groups, you know, any church groups or any religious groups that you can find and also within the community. And don't forget you have neighbors that are aging. There's nothing wrong yeah. with going over, saying hi, have a coffee. I mean, we are a community, right? Exactly. So let's not be in isolation. Let's be together. Let's make it feel like a community, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. Exactly. Thanks so much for joining us. Derek. Really appreciate it.